Today I'm going to show you how to make a carrot cake. The reason that I'm doing a carrot cake is because it's my mum's birthday and I'm actually leaving London and going to visit, which is very exciting. So I couldn't turn up without her favourite cake for her birthday. So what I've done is I've preheated my oven to 170 degrees Celsius and I've got an eight inch cake tin that I have greased with butter and lined with some greaseproof paper. I've tried to be as neat as possible today. So the recipe that I'm using is from Hummingbird Bakery and that does actually say that you should use three separate eight inch tins. However, I only have one, um, one deep one, and I don't really have the space or the inclination to then buy three separate shallow tins. So what I do is I bake it for a bit longer at a bit lower temperature um, and then I slice it when it's out of the oven. But you can do whichever way you prefer. Either use an electric hand whisk, you could just whisk this yourself with a non-electric device but you will need some elbow grease. I've got my paddle attachment in my mixer. Got 300 grams of soft light brown sugar, three eggs, and also 300 millilitres of sunflower oil, which seems like a lot, but don't worry, because now that we're gonna whisk it or beat it in, um, it brings a lot more air to it, so the oil, it doesn't seem that much. So, I'm gonna set that on a low to medium speed for a couple of minutes, just to get some air into it and get it um, looking pale. Okay. Also, what I've measured out is, it's all pretty simple actually, another 300 grams of plain flour. I've then got one teaspoon each of bicarb of soda and baking powder and half a teaspoonful of salt. Then we want to add a quarter of a teaspoonful of ginger. You can add, this is all kind of to your taste. If you love ginger, put a bit more in. I'm not, you know, I think this is just for the slightly warming, warming quality that it has. It's not a ginger cake, it's a carrot cake. And carrot cakes are generally more cinnamony. So you want one teaspoonful of cinnamon. And all we're gonna do with this is we're gonna keep beating this. This is a good thing about using plain flour is that you don't have to, a lot of the time, you don't have to fold it in like you would self-raising um, because you have got bicarbonate baking powder to really give it a lift. So I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time and keep that mixer beating. So, so if you're using an electric whisk, keep doing the same thing, but don't put all your flour in at once because otherwise you'll be covered in it. And just keep adding it in until all the flour is mixed in. And one more thing, you want just a little bit of vanilla extract. So I'm just gonna put half a teaspoon in. And then I'm gonna give the bowl a scrape just to make sure that I've got absolutely everything into the batter. One last mix. Lovely. What is a carrot cake? without carrots. Luckily I've got some. So the last thing I'm gonna add into this really lovely batter is 300 grams of grated carrot. And you just put that in and then mix this bit by hand. If you like nuts or whoever you're making this for is okay to eat nuts, you could also add in 100 grams of chopped walnuts. That works really nicely. However, I'm always a bit um, cautious with nuts, especially if I don't know who is gonna be eating this cake, if there's any nut allergies. I don't wanna kill anyone. But you know, check. Should look like that. And then you just wanna take your, take your prepped tin and pour it in. Let me see. Oh yeah. 
I'm gonna put this into my oven for about 50 minutes and check it. If you are using a shorter and multiple tins, check it after 25 minutes. Basically, when a skewer is inserted and comes out clean, or a fork, or a knife, whatever you have, the cake is done. But I know this is gonna take a bit longer just because it's all in one pan. That's now come out of the oven. It took just over an hour for me. And for the eagle-eyed among you, yes, I do have my top on inside out. So it just goes to show how early I got up this morning to make this video. So it looks very nice. It is a bit cracked on the top. That's fine because we're going to ice it with a lovely cream cheese frosting. Let it cool slightly in the tin for 10 minutes and then take it out and put it on a cooling rack. And then when it's completely cool, we will be able to ice it. The cake's cooled down. I have had a costume change because it's the following day. So the art of editing. We are gonna make some icing now. The first thing you need to do is take 50 grams of unsalted butter and just put it on a really, really, really gentle heat on the hob. We just want to melt it down. It doesn't wanna be hot. So that's done. I'm gonna turn the heat off. In here, I have 200 grams of cream cheese and um, I need 400 grams of icing sugar, but I'm gonna add that slowly because if you add it all at once, you will be covered in icing sugar. You can use an electric whisk for this as well. I wouldn't, mm, you could do it by hand, I suppose, um, but it just makes it a lot easier to do it with an electrical gadget. So, oh, yeah, I'm gonna put that on fairly low. And we're just mixing in our cream cheese and icing sugar, and then we're gonna slowly add the melted butter. A little bit at a time. Every so often just make sure that you're scraping down the bowl and then put it on a low speed for now and we're going to slowly pour in that melted butter. And when it's all mixed in you then can ramp up the heat and really start whisking it. And that is what you're looking for basically. So We've done our icing, now to assemble the cake. The first thing that we need to do is assemble the layers and then apply what's known as a crumb coat. Now crumb coat is just a really, really, really thin layer of icing around the whole cake and then you put it in the fridge for about an hour and that simply just means that when you do your final layer of icing, you don't get crumbs from the cake coming through and showing in your buttercream. So that's what is a crumb coat. Um, I've taken the cake and I have cut it into three slices like this. And I've also taken the top off um, just to make it a bit more even. And this is my snack. Because the top layer is not as rigid as the other two, that's gonna go in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is then take the second layer of the cake, and I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of this buttercream, spread it on a board, and then I'm going to put that layer on like that. And then just a nice, even, generous layer of the buttercream. And the buttercream will be quite soft um, because that has got the melted butter in it. As soon as those fat solids firm up, it will be a bit firmer. And that's another reason why we want to put this in the fridge for a bit to rest. So that layer's done. And then I'm gonna put the top layer of the cake on, like so, give it a press down, and then repeat. So another nice layer of buttercream. And then the top, well, this is actually the bottom of the cake. So I'm gonna flip it upside down. So this bit was actually in right in the bottom of the tin. And as you can see, that gives a really nice squared flat layer to the cake. And then for the crumb coat, all you need to do is don't put all of your icing on because you're going to need that for the final layer of buttercream at the end. So just little bits at a time. And then take your palette knife and you're just going to tease it around the edges of the cake, trying to fill in all those nooks and crannies 
as you go. And if you're not too bothered about being neat, you can just slap all this frosting on the cake. There's no rules for this. You're the one that's gonna eat it, hopefully. Um, so do what you want, but if you wanna, if you wanna make a special cake, then give this a go. Take off the excess, but you don't wanna put that back into your clean icing because it will have loads of crumbs on it. So we're just gonna take it off bit by bit and then just keep moving around the edges of the cake make sure that every single bit if you get bits that are kind of coming out that's fine you can sort of smooth it out and there will be another layer of icing going on top of this so don't stress if you can't get it completely neat i'm now going to put this in the fridge for about an hour at least an hour um, and I'm going to put the rest of the icing in there as well, just to firm up slightly. So have a break, make a tea. I'm going to eat the uh, cut off that I showed you earlier and um, relax for an hour. It's a lot cooler now and it's quite firm, which is exactly what we want to see. Um, so that layer is now set. So all we need to do now is add a final layer of frosting to the outside of the cake. We're going to do the sides first and you just coax it down the side of the cake. And because you've done that crumb coat first of all, you shouldn't see any cake crumbs coming through on that icing. Just keep coaxing it down the sides. We'll neaten this up in a minute, but just get it covered first of all, and then we can work on the... Uh, So even if you just wanted to kind of have it like this, you just keep kind of smoothing around. So, I've got a good tip actually. Take a big palette knife and some warm water and just dip that in the warm water. And it basically heats up the icing and you just wanna just hold it flush to the side of your cake and um, actually, this icing is a bit... And you just get quite a nice, smooth finish on the sides. And we're going to do the same on the top, just swivel it round. Like that, and then just a little bit on the sides. You could add some nuts to the top of this. You could put whatever you want on the top of it. I'm gonna go simple. I'm gonna get a little tea strainer and dust some cinnamon over the top and then put some glitter on. I can't find my little tea strainer. So I've just put some cinnamon in my hand. I'm gonna go around the edges of the cake and just sprinkle. You don't want loads because it'll be punchy. And I've got two different kinds of glitter. One sort of thick, and then I've got a tiny bit of, um, it's obviously well used, a tiny little bit of silver left. I'm gonna do kind of a line between the cinnamon and the glitter. So sort of making three rings. And then just the third little, come on. Because I always think if you're going to make a cake, you should always put some glitter on it. Just make sure it's edible glitter. And there you have a nice and a simple carrot cake with a cream cheese frosting.